Hey science fans, today we're talking toxicology and specifically LD50s, which is a concept used by toxicologists um, to determine the lethality of a certain substance. So the LD50 is defined as the dosage required to kill half the members of a tested population. LD stands for lethal dose. So the idea behind this is, let's say you were trying to test a substance to, to figure out how lethal it was. Um, you might test it on, say, a group of cute little mice or rats, and you would feed them the substance until about half of them died. And at that point, um, we would see what was the dosage that it took to kill 50% of them. And that number is a number that, that toxicologists use as kind of like a baseline, and they call that number the LD50. So you can find the LD50 for almost anything. Um, remember in toxicology, they say that anything can be poisonous. It's just how much of it would it take to actually be dangerous. So you could find the LD50 of water, of you know whatever you want, really. But the basic idea is that if something has a high LD50, that means it has a low toxicity. So it would take a lot of that thing to kill you. Um, conversely, a low LD50 means a high toxicity. So it wouldn't take that much of the thing to be dangerous. To give you guys some ideas, um, on some, some common substances. Um, I just jotted down the LD50 of sucrose, right, sugar, common sugar, and that has an LD50 of 30,000 milligrams per kilogram. So they usually list LD50s in milligrams per kilogram, and that means that for every kilogram of body mass, uh, you would need 30,000 milligrams to kill 50% of the test population. So that's a pretty high LD50, and what that means is that sugar, table sugar, is, is not that dangerous. Right? It's, it has a very high LD50, you would have to eat a lot of it to kill you. Um, sodium chloride, table, table salt, has a lower LD50 of 3,000 milligrams per kilogram. That means it's a little more toxic. And then cyanide, which is a pretty dangerous substance, has a very low LD50. Um, that means it would, it would not take much cyanide at all to kill you. So let's uh, show you guys how to do a little calculation here. Okay, so this problem is asking us uh, how much table salt would it take to kill 50% of a group of 200 pound people? And I picked this because that's about what I weigh, 200 pounds. So if we want to figure out how much table salt it would take to kill me, or at least have a, you know, a to kill 50% of people, a group of people that weigh as much as me, we've got to go through a couple different steps. So I'm going to show you guys the mathematics of how to do this. So our first problem is units. Um, here in America, we love our pounds, but uh, the world of science doesn't usually work in pounds. So since LD50s are listed in milligrams per kilogram, our first task is to convert um, my weight into um, kilograms. So what I'm going to do is just take my weight, which is about 200 pounds, and multiply it by 0.4454 kilograms per every one pound. So there's about 0.454 kilograms in a pound. So if I take my mass, my weight times that, I should get my mass in kilograms. So I am, or I have a mass of 90.8 kilograms. Okay, so there's step one. Now, step two, I'm going to take my mass, which I just figured out is 90.8 kilograms, and now I'm going to multiply that by the LD50 for sodium chloride, which if we remember, sodium chloride has an LD50 of 30,000, or sorry, 3,000 milligrams per kilogram. So let's take my mass times 3,000 milligrams per kilogram. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us the amount of table salt um, to kill 50% of a group of people that weigh about 200 pounds. Now the problem here is that that's in milligrams of sodium chloride, of table salt. And that's, you know, that's pretty unfamiliar. You know, it's hard to have a, a concept of you know, what does 272,000 milligrams actually look like? 
So let's, let's keep converting this and try to get into something that's a little more familiar. So step three, let's convert uh, milligrams to grams because that's, that's a little more familiar to most people. So we're gonna take my answer from here and to put it into grams, all I have to do is say that one gram is equal to a thousand milligrams. So basically I'm just taking this number and I'm dividing by a thousand. Um, that's gonna give me 272.4 grams of table salt. Okay, so that's a little more familiar, but let's keep on going. And let's see if we can get back into pounds. So I'm gonna take 272.4 grams of table salt, and I can convert that into pounds by saying that one pound is equal to 453.6 grams. Okay, so that should give me how many pounds of table salt it would take to kill me. So about 0.6. All right, so basically if I ate um, a little over half a pound of salt, I'd stand a pretty good chance of dying, me being 200 pounds. So when you do um, LD50 problems, you can kind of use this as your guide, but what's gonna change is you're gonna have to, you know, uh, put in your personal uh, weight and turn that into um, a mass. And then this number here, which is the LD50 for whatever substance you're talking about is also gonna change. So if you're looking up something that's very toxic, uh, that number will be lower. If you're looking up something that's not that toxic, that number might be higher. But you can kind of use this as your basic step. And just to put this into uh, one final term, um, that might be a little more familiar, that's equal to about 48 teaspoons. So if I just uh, dug into a bowl of salt with a spoon and uh, swallowed 48 of them, I'd probably die. And that would not be uh, so awesome. So that's it.